All right, hello everyone. So today we are going to start building a Twitch mobile application with Android. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how to get started with registering an application and essentially how we can be uh, given an app access token, which is the token that we specifically need to make uh, requests on behalf of our user. Right, so with that being said, I'll leave the link down in the description below, but essentially the first thing we need to go ahead is we need to register the application. So we can go ahead and we click on this. We can go over to the developer console. Now, when we click on that, um, since I've already logged in and created one, you see I have a console, what you're going to need for the uh, to be on the developer Twitch page, where you're going to need a Twitch application or a Twitch um, account, and that account is going to need two uh, two-factor authentication enabled on it. Um, with that being said, then once you have all that, we can go ahead and click register the application. Now for this name, this name can technically be anything. It just has to be unique um, within the uh, Twitch developer ecosystem. Um, then we go ahead and this redirect, uh, this OAuth redirect URL. Now if you're uh, unfamiliar with OAuth at all, or essentially how we're going to be using it within the uh, mobile applications, um, it's a little different uh, in mobile than it is, say, um, something like a web environment. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what it is, um, I've created a little uh, blog post over here um, when I interacted with the GitHub API. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description below, but it talks a little bit of what it is. Um, I also have resources to this really great YouTube video um, and then this little um, authorization flow you can see for native apps using the browser. Now specifically, we're going to be using the browser for OAuth because that is considered a best practice. Uh, when the user logs in, we're going to have them log in through the browser and then redirect it back to our application. What this does is it essentially, it removes our app um, as a vulnerability. That way our app doesn't have to deal with the user's uh, username or password, which is considered a best practice. Then our app only has to deal with tokens. Tokens are great. Tokens can expire, tokens can be revoked. It's very awesome. Um, right, and then at the end, um, right at the end, I leave another link um, for the full um, paper that you can read on the Internet Engineering's Task Force paper on OAuth 2.0 for native applications. Um, right, so where were we here? Right, so now you can, for this OAuth redirect URL, as you can see, um, there's a few restrictions on it. If we go HTTP colon backslash backslash and then start typing, as you can see, redirect URIs um, must be uh, it's HTTPS protocol. So we just have to say HTTPS there. This can be anything. Um, typically what it is, is it's usually the name of the, your package structure, right? So whatever your, or the name of your application. So it'd be com dot, you know, whatever, and then your application name. So let's just say another um, app. Um, but this again could be literally anything. Um, we then select the category. Uh, we'd say application integration. We'd hit I'm not a robot and then we'd hit create. Now I've already created a test application so I'm not going to go ahead and click create. I'm going to back out and we're going to view the one that I've already created, right? Um, as you can see the name is called peanuts and grapes and this OAuth redirect URI, um, you see HTTPS peanut butter and jelly um, application and then it gives us this uh, client secret. Now the client secret, that's okay for us. Um, to expose to the world, right? It's okay for us to us uh, to store the client, uh, or actually the client ID. The client ID is okay for us to store inside of our mobile application. What's not is our client secret. We don't want to store that on the mobile application. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about this client ID and this client secret later, but right now I want to talk about this OAuth redirect URIs. Now the reason that we have this specified is because upon a successful login by the user, uh, the Android system is going to send out an implicit intent. Now if you're unfamiliar with what intent or implicit intent is, just know that it's, a, it's an implicit action that's sent out and um, it has no specified destination. Um, the Android system is just going to essentially ask all the apps um, if any one of them can handle uh, this redirect URI. Um, and so to be able to say our app can handle it, we have to go inside the Android application and define an intent filter. Now this intent filter is gonna be very similar um, for everyone, specifically the scheme. What's not going to change is uh, this host. Now this host, if we actually look, there's H, this peanut butter jelly and it's HTTPS. Notice that the host and scheme 
are exactly similar to our redirect URI. As you can see, the scheme uh, is this HTTPS, and this peanut butter and jelly um, is what comes after the backslashes. Now, if you're wondering um, where this is actually defined, again, I'll leave a link down in the description below, but it's actually in this data tag. As you can see, when we're, do, when we're specifying a URI, there's URIs, there's a specific pattern, right? Schema or scheme, host, port, path, so on and so on. So by following that, um, we actually define our intent filter like this. Now, we have our intent filter, which essentially means anytime upon successful completion, we're going to be, our app is going to be able to handle that. Now, how do we make the request, the request to the Twitch API? More specifically, where are we making that request to? Now, we are making that request through um, what is called a um, implicit grant flow. Now, we can actually scroll up here. Again, I'll leave the link down in the description for this, uh, these documentations. But as you can see, there's three types of flows to getting OAuth access tokens, right? Remember, the access tokens are what allow us to make requests on behalf of the user. Now, there's implicit grant flow, there's authorization code, and there's client credentials. Now, for us specifically, if we read this document or this description, it says use this flow if your app does not use a server. For example, use this flow if your app is a client side Jap JavaScript app or a mobile app, which is our map or which is our application, right? As you can actually see this authorization code, you can see here um, it says use this flow if your app uses a server and can securely store a client secret. Right, our application is purely mobile, so that means we cannot securely store a client secret. If we wanted to use a client secret or this authorization code flow, we'd have to essentially implement a reverse proxy server um, that would be able to securely store the client secret there. Our application would then have to reach out to that server, get our client secret, and then make a request. But since we don't have a server, we're going to move on to this implicit grant flow. Now, as you can see here, um, this is the endpoint we're going to be hitting. We're going to make a request to this dot or to this slash authorize. And then for the parameters, we need to provide it a client ID, a redirect URI, a response type, and a scope. Now, for the scopes, again, I'll leave a link down in the description below, but we're going to say user read follows, which essentially means we view the list of channels a user follows. We get the channels and we get the streams. Now, how do we make this request, right? Let me just go over, right? How do we make the request to this here? Now, you would typically think that we'd use retrofit, but we actually don't, right? Because we want to redirect the user um, out of our application. We want them to log in through the browser. So how do we do that? We do that, we actually go to this main activity here. We do that by creating an intent, an implicit intent specifically. Now, all that really means is we're just creating an intent with no in with no specific, specific destination. Um, we say this with this uh, intent action view, and then we have this uri.parse. And then this, this is essentially the, UR, the um, endpoint that we're trying to hit. We provide it with the client ID and the redirect URL or UR, URI, the response type um, and the scope. Um, as you can see here, um, all you'd have to do really is just change uh, the client ID to your client ID and the redirect URI to your URI. Right, then we just provide a simple button and we, we start the, uh, the intent or essentially we, we send out the implicit intent by saying start activity Twitch intent. Now what that's going to do, as soon as we click this button, it's gonna send the user uh, to the browser. The user is going to log in and it's gonna request authorization. Um, and then once the user hits authorize, it's going to be uh, redirected to our application because we have the proper intent filter. Now you're going to know if you have this, if you have the intent filter set up correctly or not, specifically because once the user authorizes our application, if they are not redirected to our app, if instead the uh, the the redirect URI is just tried is just trying to be loaded in the browser, um, that means your intent filter isn't set up properly. Right, and then so upon a successful request, right, once our user is actually um, logged in, right, they'll be redirected. So then to be redirected, we can 
access that intent on the resume function. Now, upon successfully uh, redirecting, we're going to get uh, the data from uh, the data from that intent, and it's going to look like this, right? It's going to have our redirect URI. Um, here and it's going to have this access token. Now this access token here is really what we're interested in. That's what we're going to use in the next tutorial to send out requests um, essentially to get all the data about our user, right? Then, we, then it defines the scope and then just the token type. Right, um, this is just a short tutorial today. Hopefully it's able to uh, give you the confidence to move forward and build things with OAuth applications. Um, and I will see you in the next tutorial where we use that um, token to make even more requests. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one.